Hello, Bio 104 um, online students. This feels kind of weird because you're going to be seeing me, and you're going to be seeing a lot of me through through videos and things, but I'm not going to be seeing a lot of you. Um, so today, what I wanted to do is I wanted to uh, show you the hands-on lab kit. My kit did arrive, and when you unpack your kit, the thing that you're going to notice on the side of your kit is on the side of your kit is the code. And this is the code that you're going to enter online. So when you go to the Eagle course site and you click on hands-on lab or any of the, the labs themselves, what the hands-on lab software is going to ask is it's going to ask for the lab kit number and your email address. This way it can pair you and your kit with the work that you're doing online. So make sure to get that number entered as soon as possible. At any point, you can complete those online prerequisite um, labs, the lab safety um, online lab, the getting started, and then the virtual microscope. Please note that with our kit, we do not have a true microscope. We are going to be using the virtual microscope instead. Now, <laughs> this little kitty is Tohi and he is demonstrating exactly what can happen whenever we're doing our labs at home. They get so curious and interested in what we are doing. Um, and so one thing you wanna do when you're unpacking your kit and whenever you're getting ready to do your labs is to, to make sure that any pets or small children or other curious adults um, or even other curious animals in your environment, make sure that they're either at a safe distance or they're, they're not in a place where they could start to um, disturb or get in the way. So we're going to kick Tohi out of here. And I have a second cat. Well, come on now. All right, they do this the hard way. Whoa, this is Malgus. And we're going to kick him out of here as well. And we're going to get into our lab kit. They are some hefty boy cats. Now, when you first open up your lab kit, what you're going to notice is just packed with stuff. Laying right on top will hopefully be your safety, um, your safety protocols, your safety step. Make sure to read through these safety steps. In my kit, right on top were these two um, folded black pieces of paper. And what you're going to notice when you unpack get to your content list is that these black pieces of paper are listed. These are supplies, so don't throw these away. So we've got our pieces of black paper, and then we have our filter paper. We have round filter paper and we have square filter paper. And again, what you're gonna notice on your content list is that these are actual supplies. So don't throw these away as well. These are going to be very necessary in later labs. So you open up your kit, keep the extra, or keep these papers. Look through your lab safety, make sure to keep that, and make sure to keep your content list. The next thing that you're going to be doing is unpacking and double checking all of the supplies that you have with the supplies on the list. And one of the things I'm really enjoying about the hands-on lab uh, kit that we're getting is that they're trying to keep things together. So it may seem initially kind of weird that there are four different bags of gloves, but this is going to help us for every time that we need to go into a lab where gloves are required. Next thing you're going to want to find are your safety glasses. Of course, anytime that you are doing your lab, make sure that you are wearing your safety glasses. And then you will um, want to lay out your content list and gradually go through everything in the box. What I'm next going to do is go through some of the key items that we have that maybe you're not familiar with. Put a name with the thing that we will be using. Make sure to mark it off here on the list. You wanna make sure that you have all of your items. You wanna make sure that nothing is broken or damaged. At the top of your content list, it's going to tell you that if you do have any problems um, to go to the website and this is also posted on the Eco Course site homepage. The other thing um, is that in bold here, they're writing that if you have any problems, um, you have to report them within two weeks of delivery, which is why it's so crucial that you get this unpacked, check through everything, make sure you got everything and that's not damaged, because 
um, if anything is damaged, they need to know right away within two weeks. Let's say you get all of this and you decide you're going to drop the class. You have to return everything as soon as possible. Returns for refund must be received within three weeks of delivery. So once you have the kit, you're pretty much committed. The next eight weeks of Bio 104 Lab. Here we have three wonderful little graduated cylinders. They're all plastic. Um, the smallest one is our 10 milliliter graduated cylinder. We have our 25 and our largest one will be the 50. When we look at our 50 milliliter graduated cylinder. What we notice up here at the top is that it says in 20 degrees Celsius. So what that means is that when our room temperature is 20 degrees Celsius, our error rate will be plus or minus half a milliliter. So these graduated cylinders are nice because we can accurately measure um, liquids. And the thing with our liquids to always remember is that our liquids can form a meniscus that either bubbling up or kind of concave down that can make our measurements a little bit more, uh, make them a little less accurate than what we had expected. So if our room temperature is warmer than 20 degrees Celsius, the water will be expanded and our error will be more than half a milliliter when we are using the largest graduated cylinder. So check off on our list that we have our three graduated cylinders. The other thing that I have are our two beakers. Our beakers are labeled or named by the maximum amount of liquid that they can take. So this is our 100 milliliter beaker. Whenever we're using a beaker, you want to start your measurement down here at the bottom and measure up. So let's say we need, 40, uh, we need 50 milliliters of liquid. I would start down here and I would stop right here at this small little tick mark in between 40 and 60 and that would show that I have 50 milliliters of liquid. So this is our little 100 lead milliliter beaker and this is our 250 milliliter beaker. The other thing that is included is this adorable volumetric flask. It is our 25 milliliter volumetric flask. And if you notice here, this faint little line, when we fill up our liquid to this level, that is 25 milliliters. Now please make sure that all of these items are unbroken. Once you've unpacked them, you may wanna do the smart thing of put them back into their bubble wrap Put it back into that padded hands-on lab box. This way, um, these items will not get damaged while you are waiting to use them in later experiments. Inside of your kit, you have a test tube rack. And what I love is that they have packaged the test tubes together in bubble wrap for the different experiments. The, so you have, in this case, we've got five test tubes for an experiment and they've all been packaged together. So I've gently slide one of these out just so you can see how your test tubes will fit into that cute, adorable little test tube rack. Keep these test tubes together. It's really nice to have all of your supplies for your experiment already packaged together. Now, of course, we're gonna keep reusing that test tube rack. So don't ever throw anything away until the semester is completely over with. This is a very large test tube that we will be using in a later experiment. Again, make sure to keep that in the bubble wrap until we are ready to use it. This little brown container, really easy to overlook. This is our thermometer. Now I know in the list of student supplies, the things that we need to bring to our experiments um, as students, that there is the call for the analog thermometer or a digital thermometer. This will measure in degrees Celsius and it doesn't have a whole lot of tick marks. It's not going to get real accurate. If you happen to have an analog digital thermometer um, around your house, you can go ahead and use that when it's called for or you can purchase one fairly cheaply, I think for under $5. Dig around inside of your kit. The stirring rod is often challenging to find because it's so clear and kind of small. Make sure that that is not broken. This is your mortar and pestle. 
This is going to be used for grinding things. When we have a substance in the bottom of our container, we take this and rotate it and rub it around. Oh, it sounds like nails on a chalkboard to my ears. This is how we grind things. Do not ever pound. When you pound, you have the chance to chip this portion of our tool and then those chips will contaminate your substance. So make sure to use that kind of round grinding motion. These are two different types of pipettes that we're going to use. We have our long, thin stemmed pipette and our short, thin stemmed pipette. Yes, that's what it says on the content list. Little uh, tip whenever we're using a pipette. When you squeeze in, you push air out. So before you wanna suck up some liquid, First squeeze in, go into your liquid, release, and when you release, it will suck the liquid up into the pipette. So our long and our thin, short, thin stemmed pipette. Next we have our serological pipette. It's two pieces that have to come together. We have this long, thin piece that was in the, the package and then this rubber ball. It works very similar to our other pipettes this little bulb is going to act like this little bulb. It's squishy. When we squeeze out, it pushes air out. When we release, it will suck liquid into this portion of our tool. Uh, the reason why we are using this is because we have a much finer gradation in our measurements. So if we take a look here, we can get really refined. The total amount of liquid that we can have in this serological pipette is two milliliters. So we can get down to the really minute measurement and get very, very, very accurate. So that's why we'll be using this tool as opposed to using these other tools. This is our titrator syringe. We can see that it can take up to 10 milliliters of liquid. It has a vacuum, and so it's a little bit tough to pull. Keep that in mind when you're using this. This, this is our micro titer plate. This will be used alongside our syringe. We have our round Petri dishes. Now when your round Petri dishes come, please keep them in the package. You can feel around inside of the package for the, the lack of edges. You can feel that they're round. Please keep them sealed up until we're ready to use them. The goal of keeping these sealed and keeping this uh, pipette tip um, sealed is that we wanna keep things sterile as long as possible. Now, I have opened some things up for us today for demonstration, um, but I will be resealing them um, before so that they say as sterile as possible before we do our experiment. This is our square Petri dish, and it's a little bit challenging, but hopefully you can see in your square Petri dish that we have a nice grid, and that grid will be useful and helpful when we get to that portion of our experiment. This is the most adorable little scale. I've got a, a kitchen scale that I use a lot, and I, I know I'm never gonna use this in the kitchen, but it is so cute. What comes along with the scale is going to be this little weigh boat. Please do not ever put anything directly on the scale. We always put items in a weigh boat and then we tear or zero out our scale to make sure that it's subtracting the weight of that weigh boat before we weigh our substance. So we put our substance or the thing that we wanna know the weight of inside of our weigh boat. Back here is our um, heat source and our um, stand. They have given us more fuel than what we are actually going to be need or what is required for our experiments. That's intentional. Let's say you make a mistake. Um, you wanna have some extra fuel so that you can redo an experiment. So sometimes what we're going to find in our kit is they may have included a little bit extra um, substances. Don't panic. Uh, that's always keep everything until you're confident that your experiment went successfully and went well. You may need to um, redo an experiment. So always keep everything until the absolute end, and I would say the end of the class. We have our paper punch and they even include a Sharpie, tweezers, our little aluminum container, our funnel, all of our plastic cups. 
our chromosome kit, our gel electrophoresis comb, and our jumper cables, which will be used when we're doing gel electrophoresis. And as if to exemplify how our pets can cause problems when they get too curious, Malgus is gonna get kicked out yet again. Hopefully this time he stays gone. We have our test tube cleaning brush. This way we, we can reuse our test tubes and reuse our glassware. Always put our soap on the brush and then go in and wash our container. Please don't put the soap in the container first. Sometimes we overuse soap. By putting just a little bit of soap here, we make sure we don't have to spend all day rinsing our container out. Here's our miscell one miscellaneous bag that has our cotton balls and our cheesecloth, our toothpick and our rubber bands. And then in this bag, a couple of things that I wanted to unpack. This is almost transparent. Hopefully yours has a label that tells you that this is the dialysis tubing. We'll be using this to test diffusion. We have some strips of paper that will be important as well. Keep all of these sealed up until you are conducting the experiment that requires those individual strips. Little things like this are so easy to get lost, which is why I'm keeping them all together in this separate little bag. We have one meter of string. <laughs> we have our split peas, not to eat as soup, and then our single serving salt. And this is where I get to the point, unpacking the kit where I'm like, hey, if I'd have known that you needed these, I've got hundreds of these in my car from all the times that I've been going out to eat. But there they've included the salt and probably in the correct proportions. This is our very tiny little tube of meat tenderizer. And then what I did was I took my magnet. My magnet is a little black chunk here. And I took the washers and the bolt and stuck them to the magnet. Again, these are things that are very, very easy to get lost. And I wanted to make sure that everything stayed stuck together and would be available when I do my experiment. Now, one thing I did want to point out, my kit came with a dissection kit. And while this is adorable and wonderful, we're not going to be doing any dissection in our class. It also came with microscope slides and cover slips. We're not using a microscope. We're using the virtual microscope. We're not using a realistic microscope. So the nice thing is, is that um, you'll have these supplies if your kit came with them. All you gotta do is track down a microscope at some point if you wanted to make your own samples and do your own views. So these are some of the items that may be included in your kit that you can set off to the side um, that we will not be using. Inside your kit, you're going to find these bags um, this bag has a lot of the, the materials that are going to be used for the biological macromolecule lab. And we can see everything is fairly clearly labeled. Keep all of this stuff together. What I love about this is that they've got all of the amounts of solutions that we're going to be using, and they've got the pipettes that are needed for our biological macromolecule lab. So keep everything together when you have these smaller kits. Here's our cell respiration lab including our millet seeds. When you get to this lab, the lab is going to ask you to start the millet seeds a few days before. So make sure to read through your protocols with plenty of time so that you know if you need to start something a couple of days before you're intending to complete the lab. This is our enzyme temperature pH uh, lab. This is our molecular biology DNA synthesis lab. Lots of beautiful colors in that one. Here's our comparative cell membrane and transport lab. And then water, pH, and buffers. So I'm keeping all of these together in just a, a smaller box because for me this, this helps to stay really organized. The other thing that I'm including in here are my um, iodine indicator bottles. We have two of those. One of those is three milliliters and one is seven milliliters. We have a little bottle of detergent and a little bottle of auger. Now right now across the table, you can probably see I have three separate boxes. This box is going to fit into here. And between these two boxes, it's going to help me to have my supplies spread out 
um, enough so that it's easy to grab. What I'm going to do every weekend is I'm going to set aside the um, supplies that I'm going to be using for the upcoming lab, make sure that I've got everything available and read through my protocols. I'm gonna set a day when I'm going to conduct the lab and during that lab, I will do the pre-quiz that's called um, exploration. I will do the experiment itself and then um, I will answer the questions that go along with that experiment. And finally, once I'm complete with all of those questions, I will do the evaluation, which is essentially a quiz over everything that I did. As always, if you have any questions, please, please, please reach out to me through email or uh, the Zoom office hours that I will be having on Wednesdays from 11 to noon. This should be a lot of fun. Um, I don't know about you, but I'm getting pretty excited.